What we're showing here today is a concept called virtualized central office. The reason why we chose virtual central office is that there are plenty of central offices that belong to all of the carriers. They have different types of equipment. So carriers are really looking to actually optimize and standardize those central offices using NFV as a common platform. And of course, OPNFV working in the space of NFV, right, is, is a prime platform to actually build this particular type of an architecture. What service providers need is service agility, operational efficiency, improved customer experience, and lower costs. And there are, in US alone, there are more than 10,000 central offices um, which can be redirected or which can be worked um, in the context of you know, virtualization. What we are seeing is from the existing, where central offices are high source of CapEx and OpEx, they want to be able to standardize and build it. Uh, central offices terminate a variety of different kinds of services, like cable access sometimes, uh, if, the, if the cable plant is co-located. Uh, of course, definitely copper, right? Fiber, all of the GPON. And um, uh, they have a variety of speeds, they have a variety of equipment, and they're, de they're serving both the residential customers, business customers, as well as mobile customers. So certainly they are the prime candidate to, for us to virtualize and standardize so that you can actually create a cookie cutter solution and go stamp it out in all of the central offices. So what we are showing here is two different types of services that can be hosted in a central office in a virtualized environment. We, one is the residential service, the other one is the business service. And uh, both of those services can be hosted in the same central office on the same platform. Uh, we're using, of course, OpenStack as that particular platform on different types of hardware. Um, and we were hosting a number of services associated with that. We're building service chains, we're, b we're building a complete service, authenticating the user, build, you know, um, providing that user a full suite of services. And not only that, in, this, in, in the OPMNFE Summit, we've actually managed to bring that capability, one of the branch offices right here, um, in the, on the booth, we have this Lenovo server that's acting as a, as a branch that's connected back to the central office that's hosted in the Raleigh lab. So this is the software stack that we're using. What we've done here is we've used actually white box switching hardware from Mellanox. Uh, they, we, on these white box sw switches, we don't run the Mellanox software. Instead, we run the Cumulus software. And uh, Cumulus provides us you know, the switching, switching software capability as well as EVPN capability, which is new to this particular uh, demo. Uh, Cumulus just released their EVPN software, so we were able to actually load it on Mellanox. Um, we use servers from Lenovo, primarily the whole central office is built by on servers from Lenovo. They are OCP compliant, and then branch office we had on stage yesterday was using Nokia servers. What you see here is also a Lenovo server. We have many different types of VNFs. Um, you have, you know, open source VNFs as well as, um, you know, proprietary VNFs. So some of the open source VNFs you used are Viata OS and PFSense. And some of the pro proprietary VNFs we have is F from F5, NetScout, Cisco, Ericsson. Red Hat provides the OpenStack platform. Uh, Red Hat does not provide the VNFs, but Red Hat provides all of the open stack, entire open stack platform. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the entire overall stack. We also use the OPNFV projects like Project Barometer to do service assurance and monitoring. And we actually use a third party, um, you know, end to end management from uh, service assurance management capability from NetScout. So that's the topology we use. Uh, it's a leaf spine fabric, simple leaf spine fabric. We have a full HA capability here with all of the controllers, um, with ODL, Open Daylight Controller as well, that provides the SDN capability. Uh, we have compute nodes and storage nodes that are uh, compute nodes that are hosting all of the different VNFs, and storage nodes that are providing the storage services to the OpenStack infrastructure. Um, here, you see a picture here that's the OCP compliant hardware, and that was in the lab, and, and here you see the white box, which is from Mellanox that's on the lab. And that's the central office in the middle. Of course, what you see is we've, you, we're using more servers to emulate you know, clients or businesses. Uh, you, that's what we're using for residential as well as business. And the other one is what, what you see right here. In the residential services use case, we have subscriber machines that are emulating customers. 
these subscribers are being authenticated using PPPoE over VLAN or .1x or VLAN, just VLAN authentication. And they're terminated on, on different BNGs. You have a BNG that's provided from Ericsson. Ericsson's authenticating that particular subscriber. And then it puts the traffic over on the service chain that goes from the VBNG to the VR router that goes out to the internet. Um, the, there are two other VNFs that are provided by F5 in this case. One is the DPI, Deep Packet, Packet Inspection Engine, and the other one is the anti-DOS uh, for denial of service protection. Um, similarly, on the Cisco side, you have a firewall and then you have a um, you know, router as well. We just wanted to show different vendors uh, providing their different VNFs. We've onboarded all of those VNFs into the same OpenStack platform. We wanted to show the same service actually being uh, demonstrated on different scenarios. Then on the business services side, what we have is we, we have two offices, one right here, another one in Raleigh Lab, and then both of them are connected to the central office. One is connected locally, obviously, via a point-to-point -point connection, and the other one is actually coming in over an internet connection with a VPN tunnel. And that tunnel gets terminated in, in the central office, and now both of these branches are receiving the same set of services that are hosted in, the, in this central office, and traffic's flowing through all the way end to end. This is the onboarding process first, that we have, you know, we are onboarding all of the VNFs onto the OpenStack platform. And you have a bunch of, you know, Ansible scripts that allow you to onboard the, the different VNFs. Um, and they, you know, you can see that this is the VBNG onboarding process that we're gonna show. Then the next one is the other VNF from F5, which is the anti-DOS protection. So you will actually, as the video rolls, you will see that there is nothing here first. And then we're going to start off with, you know, running an Ansible script again. And it allows you to now onboard all of the, the, the entire VNF fairly quickly. And suddenly now you see that the network config and DOS config VNFs have been onboarded. Next one is the DPI, same thing. You run through the Ansible scripts. And once the onboarding process is complete, now you can see the DPI as well as the DOS protection VNFs, right? This is what the picture looks like of, of, with all of the VLANs that have been created, all of the networks that have been created, and with the entire onboarding process complete. Uh, the, that's how the Vestry Center office looks like. Um, and here's a pictorial view of that, you know, picture of that entire setup for the network. Next, what we're going to do is now look at the end-to-end -end service. So first, what we're going to do is um, get a subscriber to authenticate with the Ericsson VBNG. And the Ericsson VBNG is authenticating that particular subscriber, and then it provides the service. And once it's authenticated, now the subscribers can access any of the services. So that's what we're going to show here, where you're going to take the subscriber, you're going to, it's basically again a scripted thing. It br brings up the PPPoE interface, and you can see that once the PPPoE interface comes up, you will see that the subscriber is already now authenticated and it's able to access google.com. Next, what we're going to see a little bit more is access to social media websites. So let me just stop right here. Here, um, when you try to access a social media website, then it just gets redirected to an HTTPS and says, okay, you have access that's available. That's kind of you know standard process how it works today. Now what we're gonna do is actually try to execute a policy on this and say in that policy, a policy says no social networking. So we've created a, an Ansible playbook to say there shouldn't be any social access to any social media website. And we're gonna run that particular Ansible playbook. What that Ansible playbook does is it goes and installs policy and on the uh, VNF, not just on, on the VNF, and the VNF is now preventing traffic from flowing. So what you do here now is that you try to, again, reach Facebook after the policy is installed, the social media site. It says it's closed, connection's closed, no, no access allowed. And it, in, instead, it redirects to a captive portal saying, sorry, we, you don't have access to the, this particular uh, website. And then you can do the same thing and say change it to a secure HTTPS, does the same thing and it closes the connection. 
Now, here is an interesting scenario that we are also showing as part of the residential service. In this particular scenario, what you see is first, the subscriber is getting full speed access, pretty high speed, uh, and the subscriber is actually downloading something or working on something. Now, at the bottom, you'll see that there is an attacker that's waiting. Now, the attacker instantiates or initiates an attack by sending a bunch of, you know, um, uh, flooding, the, flooding the network with a bunch of packets. And what you will see here is as soon as this, this happens, you will see that the st speed for the subscriber starts to go down. And you can see that that comes down from to, you know, 7K, 3K, all the way down. And now you've detected it suddenly that, oh, there was an attack, and now the speed's going back up. Okay, so you've prevented the attack, you've actually black holed that particular attacking traffic, and, uh, you know, you've shown that uh, the subscriber can get the speed back. So what I've shown you so far is a set of services, right? The residential service and business service. What I haven't shown you at all is how are we going to monitor that situation and where OPNFE really provides that particular. So what OPNFE does, OPNFE provides multiple different services. One, OPNFE allows you uh, first test the scenarios together as part of the Yardstick project. We, OPNFE also has a service assurance capability through its barometer project. Yeah, as part of the OPNFE barometer, what we've done is on each one of these nodes, we've installed Collecti. Collecti works with Solometer to actually collect information and provide that to you know, Grafana to be able to plot that particular information. And what we've been doing is measuring um, CPU load, memory load, IO load, and so on. And we can plot that in real time and show that you know, the VNFs or the VMs are getting the service that they need. So in this first video, what we see here is a compute stress test that's going on. So first, we're gonna start the service with Collecti. All right, and what we're doing is now stressing the node with some CPU hogs, some you know, uh, IOs, and some virtual memory. So we're gonna try to you know, create some noise in the system and see what happens. And once you do that, now you can see that uh, you, know, you can actually get the information in real time as part of the Grafana dashboard, and you will see that you know, things have changed. Now, you, based on this, you can take preventive action because that's what service assurance is all about. And this is the critical you know, capability that OPNFE provides as part of the barometer project. And you can see that you know, the various different BNGs, you can look at the stats for all of those, what's, what the packets are, what, what the system's doing, where it is, and how, uh, how it's rolling. So I'm actually going to move forward a little bit. And you can actually do you know, CPU usage per core, how it, how it changed, um, as soon as the noise was introduced and, as, and, and what happens. So that was using you know, OPNFE barometer to actually ensure that we're delivering the service that we wanted to for the entire residential service use case as well as the business service use case. Now what we've also done additionally, something on top of barometer is to actually, one, is, one thing is to look at the virtual machines and find out what's the usage pattern of that, CPU, memory, I.O., network load. Another is to actually look at the entire end-to-end -end session and correlate that particular end-to-end -end session. So uh, one of the members, NetScout, provided that capability. They've onboarded their VNFs, and uh, once they've onboarded their VNFs, then they can actually look at the entire session do session analysis and then do end-to-end -end correlation and actually provide a pretty picture of what's going on with respect to the app itself or with respect to the end-to-end -end service. What they do is they have two in interesting capabilities, one that's a resident with the OES, another one that actually collects all the information and plots all that information. So really, OPNFV provides us that through its work, through the, through the projects that OPNFE has, provides us the ability to make these deployments real. OPNFE does a lot of integration testing, so hopefully these profiles, like a VCO profile, can go into the testing um, process of OPNFE. And uh, certainly it makes it much more you know, uh, closer to the real-world deployment model with, for, for those service providers.